thought of vacationing, traveling, and exploring the world fills us with joy. Gardner, Montana is an epic vacation spot lying at the northern border of Yellowstone National Park. It attracts millions of visitors worldwide. But there are so many things to know before packing your suitcase for Yellowstone National Park. For instance, is it better to stay in Gardner or West Yellowstone? Or what are the best places to add to your bucket list? But don't worry, we have covered it all for you. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Via Travelers, and I am James. So, I've noticed that many visitors to Yellowstone National Park find themselves in a fix to decide whether or not it's better to stay in Gardner or West Yellowstone. And what are the best things to do in Gardner? Therefore, I decided to help you find the answer by jotting down a list of fun things to do in Gardner. This list is an amalgamation of national park excursions and visits to the Paradise Valley, admiring nature. Without a doubt, the valley is brimming with adventures that include fly fishing, rafting, and camping throughout the summer. And the hot springs and travertine terraces are enough to draw attention in the winter season. With that being said, let's crack into the video and delve into the details of each of these. We will begin with the best things to enjoy in Gardner during your visit to Yellowstone National Park. And then later in the video, I will help you conclude whether or not it is better to stay in Gardner or West Yellowstone. If you're in for a scenic drive, Mammoth Hot Springs should be on your list. It is the closest reach of Yellowstone to Gardner. During the five mile drive between the two, you will experience the beauty of Roosevelt Arch and the Boiling River. But if you think that's it, you will be awestruck by the natural attractions in Mammoth. It is famous worldwide for its dynamic travertine terraces that showcase natural hot springs. Thanks to the boardwalk trails, you can take a close-up preview of these thermophile-filled natural wonders. There are other land-based hiking trails that spread throughout Mammoth, including the scenic Bunsen Peak Trail. If you're a fan of American heritage, you can also spend some nostalgic moments at the historic Fort Yellowstone. With all this and much more I haven't mentioned for the sake of brevity, make sure to name Mammoth the next time someone asks you what to do in Gardner. There is no way the list of Gardner's adventure opportunities doesn't include fly fishing. None. That's why I'm including it. People spend years mastering the art of fly fishing. If it's your first visit, it is better to consult a bait shop or local guide. Several local family-owned fly shops established in the mid-20th century can teach you all you need to know, as well as adding to this part of Montana's heritage. They can help you organize walking and wading trips, powerboat tours, and hold casting instruction workshops. Many visitors prefer to watch others than play, which is arguably no less entertaining. Paradise Valley lies on the route from Gardner to Livingston. The famous Highway 89 passes through the valley and offers travelers a mesmerizing natural vista. The valley has the Gallantin Range to the west and the Absaroga Range to the east, and the Yellowstone River running right down the middle, all adding to the reason why it's called Paradise. Its beauty deserves more than just gawking from the car window, and you may never want to leave once you take a step outside. The Gallantin Range hosts a national forest, and the area around the mountain terrain close to the highway offers a small dedicated space for campgrounds and features hot springs close to Gardner. The Yellowstone River begins in Yellowstone National Park and flows uninterrupted for over 600 miles into North Dakota. Though some of the river isn't ideal for rafting, the park close to Gardner fortunately is. The sight of flashing water is a rush for thrill seekers and it's hard to resist diving straight in. The safest way to enjoy the water is to hop aboard a raft and follow the lead from a professional guide. Along the river you'll find several companies offering half day, full day and overnight rafting trips. In summer you'll likely see hundreds of people embarking on rafting excursions and there is no doubt you will be forced to update your list of best life experiences after going on one yourself. Imagining yourself going all Bear grills as you navigate the waters? Well, just wait until our list of fun things to do in Gardner gets even gnarlier. What is a trip without pictures? If you're looking for a historic and picturesque spot to capture some memories, you may want to visit the famous Roosevelt Arch. 
It is located in Gardner, just across from Park Street, and is a great photogenic spot standing over 50 feet high. Taking pictures around it is one of the best things to do in Gardner. It is named after the champion of national parks, President Theodore Roosevelt, and was originally built to welcome tourists coming by train to visit Yellowstone. Serving as the northern entrance to the park, it still attracts thousands of shutterbugs. If you're in for some adventure, you'll love ziplining over the Montana Whitewater. There are various ways to enjoy the countryside, but ziplining gives an immense pleasure of admiring the landscape from above with a rush of adrenaline. It is located at the Sturmitz Ranch in the Cinema Basin. Though it may seem intimidating, it offers an unforgettable experience. Gardner is all about its natural and scenic beauty and its mesmerizing landscape. Therefore, you shouldn't miss any opportunity to enjoy the classic western landscape surrounding Gardner and Yellowstone National Park. So, what could be more enjoyable than a horseback ride through the breathtaking countryside? You can find various ranches offering rides for both children and adults. You can choose between one hour, two hours, half day, and even full day trips. A number of rafting companies also offer dual options called the saddle and paddle trips that allow you to enjoy half day river rafting trips with a two hour horseback ride, just not at the same time. So if you're looking to kill two birds with one stone, they'll have everything you need. In Paradise Valley, soaking in the popular hot springs is a favorite activity. The two most famous hot springs include the old Chico Hot Springs and the Yellowstone Hot Springs. A trip to Chico Hot Springs is rife with nostalgia as it is surrounded by many historical sites, including a large and rustic hotel and resorts dating back to 1900. There's also the historic Chico Dining Room, which offers a fine dining atmosphere unmatched throughout the area. These historical places add a charming ambiance to the area. The Yellowstone Hot Springs are located closer to Gardner, less than eight miles to the north. It offers an attractively designed pool with up-close views of the Gallantin Mountains. It is not associated with the National Park, and it's right off the highway. While the nearby resorts, luxury hotels, and classic motels in the area all have their place, the best way to enjoy your vacation in Gardner is to set up your own tent and spend a night camping. If you have an RV, you can park at a nearby campground and enjoy the night. The best places for you will be the Yellowstone RV Park and the Rocky Mountain RV Park. The best thing about them is they are near the central downtown district and provide full hookups, including cable and Wi-Fi. For those willing to experience tent camping, Yellowstone RV Park can offer the ideal experience. You can also pitch your tents in designated campgrounds in the surrounding Custer Gallantin National Forest. The closest of these is the Eagle Creek Campground. The area allocation is on a first come first served basis with basic amenities including pit toilets. The closest Yellowstone Campground to Gardner is Mammoth Campground with 85 sites also available on a first come first served basis. And believe you me, it can get a little difficult to get a site, especially in the summers. Therefore, if you're visiting Gardner to camp, make sure to arrive early. Well, these were the top eight things you can do in Gardner to make the most of the area's natural beauty. Once you've had your fill of Gardner, there are even more activities in larger, more commercialized West Yellowstone. But it all comes down to personal preference. Many people like the smallness of Gardner and that it is easy to go from one place to the other. But others love the shopping options and eateries in Yellowstone. If you're still confused about choosing a base for Yellowstone National Park, you need to list down your primary interests. If you're more interested in Giza Basins and the Grand Canyon, they are easier to reach from West Yellowstone. On the other hand, if your prime interest lies in exploring Mammoth Hot Springs and the tranquility of the park's northern region, you may want to choose Gardner. When it comes to accommodations, here again Yellowstone has more in terms of versatility and a wider selection of hotels. Finally, if you want to stay closer to the park and enjoy relatively more luxurious accommodations, you may want to choose West Yellowstone. While if you love the scenic beauty that the Highway 89 offers and want to explore the northern side of the park, Gardner certainly won't disappoint you. That's all from me. I hope you have a memorable trip to Gardner and Yellowstone National Park. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share your experiences in the comments below. Cheerio.